Oh, wow. It's a big moment. Is it? This is a huge moment, dude. It's not that big. Nah, but it's it's a it's a nice like uh I don't know, it's a nice moment now because we've done a pod. Full in the past. circle, maybe. Big full circle, yeah. A lot has happened since then. We did a pod almost I think it's two years ago. With not just me though. Was no, it? Steve was there. Steve, yeah. Um I think Celine popped in for a little bit. Right, this is in the old that. set. Um a lot has changed since then. Fuck, like I guess. a f-ing tremendous amount of changed. Was that three years ago? Yeah, I think almost Holy two, three years shit. ago. Shit. Yeah, different. That's crazy. Obviously, I don't I'm not gonna get into like uh, you know, who you are. Cause most people who are on this channel probably are, you know, our audience is pretty like intercluded, know who you are. They know what you've done. I guess the, one of the things I really want to ask you, cause I never really got to ask you this directly is like, how does it actually feel to have been a part of creating something so massive and it's still going forward? And like, cause you are that guy. Like, obviously there's all these people now who are part of it. Steiny, myself, Steve, all these other characters have come to be a part of it. Obviously, Jesse was a big part of it at a time. And mm-hmm. now you have some more people who are like management figures who are like helping you move businesses forward. But what does it feel like to be that guy? I'm sure you get that a lot, too. It's it's tough to kind of put into words, right? Like, it's just it's so surreal. Yeah, I'm very happy, though. I mean, I feel I'm grateful every day. I'm blessed. It's hard. It really is hard to put it into words like it's it's very surreal. You but know, I look it- back like even you say three years ago, I look back and I'm just like, I don't know. It feels like a dream almost. Because right? three like, years to now, it's been a huge change. Yeah. Now, but obviously, all Definitely. the years leading up to that was also a huge change. So where along the way was like the, where do you think was the absolute biggest change? I don't know, man. I think there's so many different moments. Yeah. And I ask this only because a lot of people come up to me and relate to my success and they, they try and have, have me define like a time. And it never, I, I, I like I, you said, I never feel like. I can maybe like, pinpoint it into like if I had to say something. I think one really memorable moment of to when we kind of went more like mainstream, quote unquote. Yeah. I think it's like kind of like our partnership and relationship with like Dana White and the UFC. Yeah. And I think it was that trip that we did to Abu Dhabi during COVID to watch the Khabib fight when we flew out there, met Dana White for the first time, did the Abu Dhabi stuff. We were the, the only people like in Abu Dhabi in the bubble. And then the week after that, we went on Air Force One. And met Trump, Donald Trump yeah. and amazing. like he brought us on stage at the rally and we posted that YouTube video. So I think that was like a really big, big moment, yeah. I think. But I don't want to credit that to, to everything. Of course not. But that was the thing. That was the thing that you think that took you from like a bunch of YouTubers making prank stuff to like a, like a lot more people knew you who you were. I guess I can't even say that. I don't know. You know what? There is no specific moment, man. Like I've been doing this for I made the channel in 2010, like we've talked about and yeah. stuff. But yeah. dude, it's so much different shit. Like, I don't want to credit just to that. And then, like, you know, we've had Elon Musk on the podcast Fucking recently. Insane. Or, like, you know, we've hit viral videos. I can't just say it's one thing. There is no one thing that you can accredit to, to this, you know? Yeah. I think it's the thing people don't realize, like, what goes, like, on behind. Like, do, do, I guess my question to you in regards to that is, is it just, like, an everyday, like, you're just constantly trying to figure out what's next? What are you going to do next? Like, trip-wise or content-wise or what direction you're going to go in? Because, obviously, you have... Happy Dad, you have the Full Sam brand, you have all these things that are kind of being built around mm-hmm. the content that you guys create. Mm-hmm. But like to continue to push it forward, is it just all consuming of your time? Yeah, I mean, you know too, these businesses are nothing without content. Yeah. So no matter how rich you get or how successful you get, like unless we just want to completely quit, content is king, right? So yeah. at the end of the day, we got to entertain people. We got to make people laugh. We got to make people watch. Yeah. Even so, when, sometimes though, but do you ever feel like you don't want to? Um, I kind of, I was talking about it on the last pod with the Polo G with that's Polo, not out yeah. yet, but um, this will probably come out before that, right? Or no? Uh, When is that coming out? Out of two, like a week or whatever. Either way. Yeah. yeah. Um, No, I've hit, I've hit definitely like moments where like I get, you know, kind of stressed or unmotivated and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Dude, I was telling you, yeah, even recently, like the beginning of this year, I like honestly like probably like two weeks ago or like three weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago, honestly. Yeah. I just hit a point of like fuck man. Like I was just feeling down. I don't know I don't even really know why. But um like I, on I was a personal just feeling, level or in relationship to content? Um I was feeling not not just content, like I I was not feeling good. I was feeling like like yeah, a little bit depressed, like kind of just anxious. I think it was just a build up of like stress and not taking a break ever because like i never really take a break yeah right so 
I was kind of feeling this way, and I was just I was just feeling like I was just like anxious for no reason. Like okay. I couldn't even think of why. I was just like, yo, why am I feeling like this? Like, yeah, I think uh, you, you just know, get like, to a point you're nervous. And, and it's not like, like I was like partying a lot or like yeah. doing fucking shit. I was like still working out, like being healthy. And I was just like, I didn't know why I was feeling like this. And then I kind of just decided to, yeah, I told you I went to Palm Springs yeah. and just chilled. And I, I literally I got, a, I got yeah. a question about the way you feel, right? Like, how would you describe the feelings? Is it just, you're just like a, you feel it in your heart? Or is it like a flutter? Yeah, kind of in my heart. And, and like, then just fuck. like, just like anxious, like just kind of like uneasy. worried. Yeah. Worried. Just like uneasy all the time. That's what I was feeling like at the kind of like the beginning of January. Yeah. And then we went and it wasn't, uh, when I went to Russia, I was good. It was honestly just, um, it was like at the end of Russia. I was just like posting a lot of shit, like watching numbers. Like, yeah, it's kind of like a high, this social media shit too. Right. Like yeah. even that house bulla shit, like that shit was going pretty viral. Like the numbers were crazy. Yeah. So I think it was a lot of like, I was posting a lot. I was always on my phone. And then there was some like stuff that kind of happened behind the scenes that like kind of triggered some shit, I think. Yeah. Something stressful. But yeah, and I don't know. I came back home and I just wasn't feeling good. I was feeling like, dude, do I even want to do this like anymore? Yeah. Like, I kind of feel like. Dude, I've been there. Yeah. And Have I you ever like, felt that way before? A little bit, but maybe not to this point. I felt yeah. it before. Like sometimes you get down and you're just like, damn, like, fuck, is this really for me anymore? Like I've yeah. been doing this for so long. Because I think. It also stems from I'm older now, right? Sure. So I can't do, it's not the same shit that I was doing when I was 21 or 20 or 19. Well, right? it's also. So, so you're constantly trying to live up to that too. And I think you're reading fuck. comments, you know, like people like, and there's not a lot of negativity with us too, but you of still course. read them. You see them. Right. And I think that kind of fucks with your head a lot too. Yeah. You know, people are always, now that we're at the top too, people have no sympathy for you. The big, yeah. like the bigger you get as a quote unquote famous person or a celebrity, the less sympathy people have for you. Like, oh, he's rich. Who gives a fuck? Like, yeah, sure. right. So they're more harsh on you. Any little mistake you get, they're fucking coming for your throat. Fuck yeah. Coming for your throat. So I think it's a lot, the stakes are higher now and it's a lot tougher. I mean, so yeah, even, even on that front, I mean, just the, the amount though of like money and everything that's also behind this is so much more. It's a lot of stake. Like we a have lot. an office. I got fucking... 20 employees probably that are depending on me too. Yeah. Right. And then just the fans too. The main thing is the fans. I don't want to let the fans down. Right. Yeah. Like that, that's, a, it's a lot of pressure, I think. And as I get older, it's tough to do the shit that we used to do. Yeah. So, you know, reading comments and just like, I think, I think it just got to a point where it just kind of fucked with my head. And I, I really took a step back and just realized like, yo, I haven't taken a break in probably like two years. And w but I, what I mean by a break is like, dude, I, I just want to get off social media for a bit. Like, yeah, just for like a few days. Yeah. Like, because I for us, I don't think a vacation is um, like you shouldn't even really be looking at business texts. Oh, bro. Like I, I could take stopped. a day off. But if I look at my phone, I'm going to get 20 texts throughout the day from yeah. 20 different people. Something I could decisions. read, could like, yeah. you know, trigger stress and stuff like that, too. So I just I just decided to get away for a few days and I literally kind of made sure shit was taken care of. Yeah. Like we got back from Russia, the editors were editing the video and I didn't have to look at it for five days. The podcast was done. I told Steiny fucking step up yeah. on the pod for me. So, so I just fucking just kind of got away and turned my phone off for like yeah, you need it. five it's, days. I don't think I fucked it. Just it's, complete. I just put it in the safe in the hotel room. Yeah. It's such a crazy thing. Cause I, I, after over all these years <clears throat> of me doing all this stuff as well, I, I've never taken a break. It's always been like, Bro, if I go on it's vacation, though. yeah, I know. And that's, that's what something I'm learning. That's what I realized. Like, yeah, when I, when I, and I've done this in the past, I've turned off my phone completely and just put it away. And like, dude, it feels really good. And I, I think half the thing, it's just like social media is really, I don't want to be that guy too. I'm not trying to be no, some woke it. fucking loser, like fuck yeah, social no, media. Fuck. Cause those people are like, bro, grow the fuck up. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. um, it really is bad for you in high doses for sure. Absolutely. If you never take a break, yeah. it's really, really bad for you. Just like the way I think of it too is like, yeah, so there's the business side, like reading all the shit, but then even just consuming social media shit. Yeah. Like I feel like our brains don't have enough room for all the information Not that we're like with, yeah. digesting. Like when you're watching people's like Instagram stories and stuff like that, you're just like storing all that info in your brain and you and don't even images, realize it. Yeah. Like if you're watching someone's story on like New Year's Eve or some shit, right? Mm -hmm. Like then if someone asks you like a week later, like, yo, what did this person do on New Year's? Like you could probably tell them. 
like if you saw their story and you're like, holy shit, like I didn't even yeah. really notice that and I stored that info. Bro, it's so accurate. And it's so interesting because like, I don't think people realize in doing that, how much other things, like the other things that are actually important for you, you're like not allowing space in your brain. That's true. Yeah. Cause you're just constantly like almost just stacking all this new stuff. And then there's maybe these other things that maybe you haven't dealt with or things that you should be actually thinking of that it's just like go to the wayside. I remember it must've been a few weeks ago, I was sitting on TikTok and scrolling and I literally, I, I remember scrolling and thinking like, holy fuck, I can't, I almost couldn't stop myself where I had to like, mm -hmm. I was like, yo, what the fuck? I had to like turn my phone off and be like, what the fuck's wrong with me? I know. Like it's a very, like TikTok specifically is like a, a crazy app for this. Yeah. And I think there's just like, where's the room in your brain for that shit? Like people didn't have that in the past, right? Like where's no. your brain storing all this info that you're like consuming? Yeah. It's fucked. It's, it's, it's a, it's a crazy thing, but let, let, let me just get back to this, uh, the idea of work and like, um, cause we talked a little bit about this, but, uh, but on that note too, like when I did put my phone away, like you realize how much you check it. It's like, a, like every time I would get out of the car, like I didn't have my phone on, so I still had my car. And oh, like, you like this, bro. Every time you get out of the car, like you're That's like, true. you reach and like, you check your phone on the way, like into somewhere, like probably if you're walking into the gym, every like time. you're probably like looking at your phone quick and stuff like that. So I noticed like every time and I was like, wait, like I don't have it. Or like, let's say you're meeting someone in like a hotel lobby. Yeah. Like, yo, be down in five. You get there two minutes earlier. What are you doing? Like you're going on your phone. Yeah. Like I would sit in the lobby and be like, oh shit. Like I well, actually have to just like chill here. So it's, it's interesting how much you like don't even realize. Yeah. And I, I just felt, I feel like it just cured me. So it's really not like I had some, cause I was getting worried. I was like, damn, do I have some fucking type of anxiety now and shit? But I was really just like, damn, I just needed a break. A break. I just needed a break, bro. Like, and now I know like, like I would wake up in the morning too and just instantly look at my phone. Yes. Yeah, uh, like at I fucking have... like 7am alarm goes off. What do you do? Grab your phone. I had to stop. I message business yeah. texts are already there. Yeah. Go on social media. So now I'm just like for the, this whole month, I've just been not even have it on do not disturb. And I just don't even look at texts or anything until yeah. like 9am after the gym. And it so feels smart. It feels so good. And then at night, like, come like seven thirty eight, like phones away. I'm not fucking looking at it. Yeah. And it feel it, dude, I feel like I'm not How long have go you been back. doing that? I've been doing that like all this year. Even, yeah. even like last year, I started putting my phone away at like seven because people yeah. are just blowing me up about random shit. No, like, so many people, you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm too accessible. So I think that's something that's helped me like a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and in regards to, I guess, work in general overall, like we were kind of talking about, you know, delegating like stuff to Stein as far as like producing this podcast stuff. Are you going to be doing more of that kind of stuff? And cause like, it's hard cause doing what delegating. Yeah. Like, like, uh, yeah, taking a step to. back. Uh, I don't know if it's taking a step back because yeah, well, I'm, I'm really good at delegating shit. I mean, that's kind of where we are, where we are. Like yeah. you, if you want to be a boss, you got to learn how to delegate shit. For right? sure. Like the people that make it are the people that like know how to do something and then technically if it's something that someone else can do teach them how to do it properly. you should just teach them how to do it and you yeah. shouldn't be doing it and then you move on to the next step like yo what's n now i'm going to make the next move for the business right yeah. like now i'm going to start working on this so it's not really taking a step back but definitely i realized when i took some time off too like there's a lot of capable people yeah. and i think when i'm around people just kind of lean on me yeah, more we're about not it. just steiny but a lot of people um, so I think that's something I already did right when I got back, I was just like, yo, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this. Like I've been, I post, I like every time we drop a YouTube video or a podcast, I'm the one that like physically I know, I know. I, post the stories, <laughs> like post on Instagram, then go to Snapchat, post on Snapchat, like copy the YouTube link, post the swipe up link. Like I was the one doing that till honestly, like, I, know. I remember watching you maybe do it. like, I don't know, officially like oh, two days ago. I know. I watched you from the beginning. Yeah. Like, soon as like I when a YouTube video content. comes out, I got to spend an hour on my phone. Yeah. Extra. I've, I've watched you do it. Right? So it's like, yeah. dude, now I'm just like, maybe the sometimes the story sequence isn't going to be the exact perfect way that I want it. But right. I teach them what I know. You know, like keep the first story side like super visual and entertaining. Yeah. Don't make people skip it. Just see, try to yeah, teach them. See, Jacob? Brad's the master of Instagram stories. Yeah. I yeah. always watch your stories and I'm like... Yeah, you yeah, yeah. You toss a little pole right at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I've learned. I've the learned. The pole a lot. is the key, right? Fucking poles are huge. We'll drop bro. that. Yeah. Because it's the easiest way to get people to engage with the post. Yes. And if they engage with the post, a pole. Yeah. And then if they engage with the post, yes. I think it's going to move up on the top of the rankings it, on people's stories. Exactly. That's exactly what happens. The pole. Um, no, you, you nailed it, man. I mean, 
So I guess it, to that regard, do you ever feel like afraid to, or I mean, at one point you must've been afraid to step away cause you weren't doing it. Yeah. I mean, cause it felt even, like just on it just, you. It just gets bigger and bigger. Like, I mean, I used to edit all the Nelk videos too, pretty much. So right. Crazy. Then eventually, you know, you let someone else edit it. I've luck, luckily we were enough to meet fucking Oscar. Yeah, so it. I don't even want, I can't edit even close to what that guy right. could do. So you let him take over that, you know? And then, yeah, you just gotta, it's tough though. It's tough to find people. So it's not like you can just find someone and just say, take over this. Like the struggle really is finding capable people Yeah. that, you, you know how it is, right? Yeah. It's tough to hire people. And then teach them and then hope they stay. Yeah. Cause a lot of people you teach and they fucking are like, cool, I'm gonna go do this. Yeah. Or they get greedy or yeah. fucking, yeah. You so it, with is, it, all. it is tough, but delegating is definitely the key. What would you say are the hardest things, like the hardest learning points you've had throughout this entire journey of yours, business-wise? I mean, yeah, we, we've talked about this, I guess, is like, yeah, I mean, managing talent is definitely tough. Yeah. But there, there's really. a lot of crazy people out there, man. I've been there. How, um, oh, fuck, I don't know if, how much we could talk about it, but um, the Bob stuff? We, we can if you want. Because um, So the only reason why I want to ask about this is because now that I do the podcast with you and Steiny and then whoever else is rotating on there, um, the, the Bob stuff. I'm not, I'm not here to shame or talk bad or, but like in your words, ultimately, why would you say it just didn't work out the simplest not way? Sure. I think he just, I, th I guess he thought he was getting screwed, which he wasn't man. Cause I, that contract is, I think he thought he was getting screwed, I guess. Genuinely. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think he thought he was getting screwed and yeah, I think, I think with Bob is like, you know, he, I don't think he's a bad person. Yeah. I just think, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. Like, you know, I'm not saying that I, I would personally sit down with him and like make up with him if he was willing to do that. You know, yeah. I don't know. It kind of is what it is. I kind of said everything yeah. that it was without me wanting to get more, you know, personal yeah, or anything like sure. that. But I said what I could say. And I think everyone that I talked to, like even your mom the other day was like, yo, like you said it so well and it's so true. Yeah. I was so crazy. I was like, I didn't want my mom watch that shit. Yeah. I again, was like, it was just what? like, I think one thing that he was kind of overlooking was like, dude, you're joining something very big with a lot of infrastructure, with a lot of like, you yeah. know, you're not just joining some random shit. Like you're joining one of the biggest teams. Yeah. So I think that was kind of overlooked a little bit, but it's sad, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, tough. It's very, it, it made me very sad. Yeah. It's wild. Well, at least now you got Steiny and yeah. me. It's dope. All right, boys. Quick interruption for one of our sponsors, Manscaped. Yes. Okay. I've used these products before many, many times. I actually have like a bunch in my bathroom. I've used them for my balls. I'm just going to tell you the truth. This is a fact. Now, they just sent me this Beard Hedger Pro Kit. And honestly, I've, I've been using like different types of uh, beard trimmers for a very long time. This is like honestly exceptional quality. I'm, I'm actually doesn't doesn't surprise me because, again, I have the, the ball trimmers. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you again. And uh, it doesn't it doesn't surprise me that these are equally as like sleek and, and just like just high quality. If you guys want to get it, I'm telling you, this stuff is just I think Manscaped is ahead of their time, to be honest. Like this is it's just so seamless they obviously have the adjustable head it's cordless it's waterproof super easy they have like a little docking thing you just dock it on and it charges i literally use again i just got this they sent it to me in the mail but i literally use the the other one like the ball trimmer because i clean my ball hairs which is you know, I feel like it's just important in general. Now I'm going to use this every day probably for my beard. And it's actually really like really seamless. Like this adjustable for the length right here in the middle. This is just honestly a dope product. And it doesn't surprise me that they're crushing it and they're doing so well. And you guys should give it a shot. Now, it also comes with like beard brush, which I use literally every day. It comes with beard oil. It comes with a beard shampoo, which is also nice to get your beard to smell nice. Every time I've ever used an actual beard shampoo, people notice it. Like legit. Normally, like I'll go in for a hug and be like, oh, you smell good. I'm like, yeah, I actually clean myself. Um, there's a beard oil, which is also nice to keep your beard like flat and like not crazy out all over the place. There's a brush with two different types of lengths, I guess, as far as brushing goes, which is dope because normally you see one side and one with like normally this side. But now we got two. So on top of that, there's beard balm and there's beard conditioner. And if you want to get like super funky with it, which I'm not necessarily that guy. My barber is that guy. You can like get the little wild strays. This They gave these like dope like stainless steel 
little shears, I think these are called. But this I use religiously. So if you guys want to give it a shot, it is 20% off with code raw talk at manscaped.com and also free international shipping. So again, 20% off manscaped.com. Go there right now. Use code raw talk. F any other code, code raw talk. Support your boy. Shout out Manscaped. Amazing product. Um, let's get back into this podcast. So I have a question in regards to me because people ask me this all the time. Am, am I a Nelk member? I think, I mean, I think you're a part of the Nelk boys. Yeah. I'm I like say, the Nelk man now because I'm 33. Yeah, I know. You're like the Nelk uncle. <laughs> no, we should. I mean, we got to do, we should do a lot of content this year, man. Yeah, I want to. We I, I want to, because, okay, in regards to this, exactly the same thing. I really want to ask about this and talk about this. The last video you guys posted, um, going to Russia. Do you want it? You want to be a part of Nelk boys? Well, I want, I want to be, I love that content. Right, right, right. Like that yeah. content to me, because it's, it felt a little bit different. It was like a little bit more like, I don't know, ex like exploring and like Which almost. One? This, this has oh, the new one. Yeah. 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 Whereas like you guys kind of, it wasn't like so much prank shit. It was just like you guys were just traveling and like fucking having fun. I'm and glad like people liked shit. it. I'm really glad we got a great response on it. Yeah. And dude, we were so happy the whole trip. Like we were like, we genuinely enjoyed that trip, which is, yeah. Same thing we we're talking about before. It's like, we're getting older now too. And, and not that we're not going to do pranks, but yeah. cause, cause I still find some pranks funny, but I, f I really, I'm really, really happy that people enjoyed that video because I enjoyed it and I enjoyed filming it. Yeah. I enjoyed watching the edit. I yeah. enjoyed every single part of the process of that video. So I think it's cool that people liked it. And now I think we're going to follow that lead. And like, I think we just got to really sit down with our, I'm going to take lead on it, but it's got to be only shit that we actually like, Yeah. you know, like let's not try to appeal to anyone. This is what we did back in the day. Yeah. And it was, let's stop caring what other people think. Let's stop, you know, let's just fucking do what we want to do now. We're older now. Yeah. And let's just, let's just do it. And it's not going to be that different, but it's yeah. going to be, I don't know. It's going to be whatever the fuck we want to do. And guess what? If you don't want to fucking watch, then don't fucking watch. Yeah. Straight up. I mean, bro, that's how you got to do it. I think that's how you find ultimate success on the internet. Cause like, if you keep trying to appease people, eventually you find yourself in positions where you're like, and it fucks with you. Yeah, because then you live on those like highs because you want everyone to be like, yo, that shit was dope. And you can't always have that. Even if you did everything you thought they wanted, you wouldn't get that right every time. Yeah, I think you know? we'll mix it up. I think we'll do some pranks, too. I love doing the Instagram shit, too. I love that shit. I love the quick hits. Yeah. And like the Balenciaga one or the pumpkin one I did. Yeah, the like Balenciaga shit, like shit was funny. Yeah, that was funny. So shit like that. And then we'll definitely do some pranks in the Nelk videos and stuff, too. But quicker and just only shit I find funny but yeah. dude you can't be traveling and exploring Bro. new countries that's personally like a passion of mine yeah like i fucking love traveling and i love like getting that culture shock yeah. and just seeing new places and i also love to prove to people that i think you can go to any country on this planet if done properly you yeah, can well, go anywhere and you there's just went so to fucking russia yeah and like, everyone said don't go and blah 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 yeah. like people are still calling us stupid for going but it's like dude i'm back here we made an amazing video you can you can go anywhere if you do it right yeah. and you link with the right people. For sure. I want to go to North Korea one day. That's insane. We will go. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fucking, that'd be the, you know, honestly like that. I think that might be our last video ever. <laughs> what, Cause we don't come back or what? No, just, I don't know. But yeah. Cause I it's think, like, where do you go from there? I think we're going to go to North Korea one day. I don't really we, do. If we, if we go to North Korea, you got to think about that. Cause it's like, no one's We ever, get invited though. Like it'd be like. Dennis Rodman went. You, <laughs> he said it's lit. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. But like, do you think, do you think they have ski resorts? They like, and everything's like private, but we'd have to get invited. Like, we're not just going to, you can't even fly to North Korea. So the way I'm thinking about it is I think we'll meet the right person one day. That's going to be some government type of guy. Or maybe if Trump gets back into office Yeah. and from North Korea's perspective, they would want us to come and expose what a great country, quote unquote, right. Uh, North Korea is to our American audience. Yeah. And that's how it would be. And Dude, we're not going to do anything fucking dumb there and shit. Like, we're going to be invited. It's going to be all taken care of. Yeah. And we're going to go and we're going to fucking Dude, hit some that, slopes with <clears throat> Kim Jong-un. Bro, that would be the craziest fucking shit. Would that you would go? go? Of course I would go. I could never, like an opportunity in life, I couldn't pass that up, man. Imagine Kim Jong-un on the podcast. Bro. <laughs> yeah. I that, think we could pull it off. I think we can pull off anything. Well, yeah. I mean, after, after like the Elon Musk thing. The Trump thing. After all those things, I mean, I don't think anyone really doubts it. Yeah. So before you kind of like started having that, like what in your mind, like, did you just always believe that you were going to be able to get to those points? Or was it just like 
it happened over time. I know everything happens over time. But like when you started getting like, I guess it was Dana was the first thing you said. And then Dana kind of connected. Which you. was way later in our career. But way later. Yeah. Way later. But once you started getting these like heavy, because like for the podcast, like Elon Musk is like the only other person was Joe Rogan. Yeah. Well, that's well, all John. That's all credit to John. He totally yeah. got Elon. I just, they, they had a relationship. Yeah. That yeah. was all him. He just emailed them and he's been, e he was emailing them for uh, months. Yeah. And Elon was saying maybe, maybe soon. Yeah. Just maybe soon, period. And then he just And then it. just like kept doing it, kept doing it. And then one day he's just like, yeah, could be good. He's like, as long as we don't, we can't talk about Twitter because I'm in a lawsuit. And we're like, okay, we won't talk about Twitter. Like, we're Damn, good. that was his only thing. Yeah. Just one day he's just like, all right, sure. Fuck. And then we just did it. So You know when he started, because there was a clip where I saw him, Rogan, because they were watching your podcast on Rogan and they I were talking that. about, yeah, and they were talking, Johnny, Johnny probably showed you. Which is that, that's fucking cool cool as fuck and they were talking about like the climate change stuff did he did he ever go into detail about like that whole climate change thing no but people are saying that's the next thing right yeah I've like the, the next like drama i don't know no one really talks about global warming no more Yo. it's such a big thing remember like the aerosol cans and the fucking atmospheres eroding and shit i just feel like it's i feel like i feel like there's something else coming soon that they're gonna like <sighs> fuck it's just always it's it really is a thing climate change is one too you can't really like if if people believe in it, if they believe in man-made global warming, like they're not ready to accept any other opinion. Yeah, like they're not. Like I've, I heard someone say it too. I think yeah, Jordan Peterson on Joe Rogan said it's like a religion. Like it's like this is it. Yeah, like this is it. Like don't even. I don't even want to hear another opinion Damn, about it. So that'd like, be a good. We thing. are fucking up this earth. We're the reason it's like getting warmer. The crazy thing about the earth, though, as far as I understand, I'm not an expert on any of this, but like we would die before the earth would ever die. Like we would wipe, we'd wipe ourselves out and the earth would continue to flourish. Yeah, but I mean, from my understanding, the earth goes through like natural warming and cooling periods throughout the entire history of time. Like yeah. the entire earth was fucking frozen at one well, point no, it's, when there it's was a, no humans on it. I think it's four, it's either four or five times the whole earth had collapsed basically and then came back to life again. Yeah. Like and four like or five that's, times. That's when there's no human involvement at all. Zero, yeah. So, I mean, we might have a little effect on it, but like to say that everything's happening is is man-made as opposed to potentially just natural, like the cycle of life and earth. Yeah. I it's, mean, you got to at least look at the other side. That's the thing. Know? But that's the thing with all of this is like, uh, it seems like on the internet, there's just more and more of a divide between like left and right. And it's just becoming a crazy thing. I, I think I think with that one specifically, it's more like, because you're like, you're like shattering someone's world. Like, what do you mean we're not fucking up this earth? Like, you've been taught to believe that your whole life. Yeah. So people don't, like, it kind of scares them to, because when you accept that other side of the opinion, you're admitting that you've been fooled your yeah. entire life, right? Like, you've, yeah. you're kind of admitting it. Like, if you get proven wrong on global warming, you're like, well, everything that I've learned has, has been a lie for these last, since, like, yeah. school and it's shit. It's a mind fuck. It's a mind sure. fuck. And I get that. In regards to that and this whole, like, you know, without getting too political, right? Um, we and you obviously lean a little bit more towards, I guess I would say the conservative side of things. Do you ever feel like, do you get too much shit for that or do you get love for that? Because it's, because this is my thing with all this like left and right shit, because it's very prominent on the internet. I mean, you could just tell by like the fact you do, you know, a pod with Trump and this kind of stuff that, you know, the rallies, right? You can't deny that kind of like, I wouldn't even call it an affiliation, but just like. Yeah, yeah, affiliation. Yeah, but care, care. Yeah, yeah. And people, you know, who on the other side and there's other content creators that are more left, whatever, it's, and it's all good. Um, I guess my, my, my point in saying all this is like the frustration I have in it is like I've recently have been going on. I went on Hassan's mm -hmm. podcast and his, his Twitch stream and I've gone on Ethan's pod. Um, and I got a lot of good feedback from going on there and having these conversations. And I guess it's just frustrating because when I see those sort of like, you know, if you did something with Trump and, and their audience is on, they're like, fuck you, you suck. Cause I believe this, I feel this. Do you ever feel like it's really hard for people to find middle ground? And why, why do you think it is hard for people to have some middle ground? Cause like, it seems like, I don't know if it just feels like I've had a lot of conversations with people who lean more towards the, the right. And they're willing to listen to the left, but very, very far left is like very unwilling to listen to the right. Like there's no middle ground sometimes. I can't really provide a specific answer as to why, honestly. I think I think people are just angry and they're just stuck in their ways, right? Yeah. And and if you don't agree with them, they 
yeah, they can't have a civilized conversation about it. They don't even want to hear it, you know? Yeah. It's like, this is my way. And, you know, yeah, that's, everyone talks about it. That's one of the biggest problems with society now is that we can't even talk about shit. Yeah. It's, you can't even talk about it. It's fucking about crazy. shit, right? Yeah. It's a weird, it's a weird thing, man. Cause, cause like I, I really enjoy like the, the content I've been doing lately with some of these creators. Cause I like to hear people's perspectives and I like to understand why someone feels or strongly away about the things that they feel about. You know, the minute I do that, then people turn on like my own audience will turn on me and be like, what the fuck? You're a fucking, you're a loser. Like you shouldn't even have them on the podcast or whatever. And I'm like, dude, like what happened to having that conversation? True. You know, like I did, uh, I think at the pod we did, um, with H3. Not him. with H3. Oh. I had them here. They were there. They were shitting on me. But even the pod <clears throat> I did with us and we did Aiden and I brought up the whole Tate thing. And like, oh. I was like, I presented that other side because <laughs> right, right. I got presented the other side. Yeah. Everyone was like, you fucking hater. And it's just like, it's not even that. Like, I'm just literally like, I'm learning something new because I didn't know about these things. And it's like, yeah, that's a problem with, I will say that's got to be a problem with left and right. For sure. I think the left was really bad with it too. But I mean, things always go back and forth now too. Like, let's see what happens with the the whole Trump stuff this year and stuff yeah. like that too. I just kind of do. I just try to do what it, what's in my heart and what's in my brain. Yeah. Like you know, I, Trump. I liked. I thought he was the best choice. I mean, as opposed to Clinton, or was it? It was Biden. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as opposed to Biden, Biden's like straight up. I don't give a shit. He's the biggest fucking loser. Everyone yeah. knows it now. Like left and right knows it. It's pretty fucking. He's just crazy. literally like I don't even understand it. The videos <laughs> yeah. that I see. I know the videos that I see on fucking Instagram and TikTok of Biden. Sometimes I think I they're fake. I me too. Yeah. Like Dana actually Dana sends me a lot. <laughs> Bro, I think he it's sends fake. me the Biden videos all the time and they're fucking insane i literally replied to him I'm like bro that's got to be fake yeah this has got to be fake because it's like what the fuck is going on like this yeah. guy can't even speak yeah how I, can I you possibly <clears throat> say that this guy should be president anybody but him yeah no anybody I get it. like I, the guy's a complete loser so <laughs> how could you, you know, not how could you not support trump i know it's fucking crazy man it's it, <clears throat> dude so okay in regards to all this stuff how come you felt like you know, when you started making content, you, I noticed this cause not a lot of people have this. You didn't give a fuck. Like you were just willing to kind of put yourself, not be like, yo, I'm this, but you put yourself in a position where it was very obvious kind of like what you were deciding to like kind of affiliate yourself with where I know a lot of creators over all my years of doing this, even though they may feel like, Hey, I like Trump or I like this. Like, for example, I know, I know a mainstream artist, like a mainstream celebrity artist. There's like all, there's so many of them. A list that goes, I, he, he was telling me how he had to post congratulations to Biden, even though he never wanted Biden to win. He didn't care. He was voting for Trump, but because of his affiliation to like the music industry and who he was, <laughs> he said, I have to post this. Otherwise I know that I'll get so much negative feedback. Wow. If I don't even say congrats type shit. So, so like what made you feel like, you were in, in the social media space, which, you know, sometimes, well, not even sometimes, is kind of largely weighed left and right and people attacking each other. What made you feel comfortable enough to be like, this is what I believe in, fuck it. I just, we've just never cared. Yeah. We've just never cared. And we've always been like, quote unquote, like, I don't know, fucking men of the people. Like just trying to be, you know, trying to, I don't know, just trying to be ourselves and do what we want, you yeah. know? So I love Trump. I love I love them especially you know I don't know what's gonna happen this year yeah of course um I don't know if he maybe already had his time but um I mean I liked a lot of the things he was saying the guy's definitely not an angel no absolutely of not. not and I think some of the shit he said in the past about like women and shit I I can sympathize with a woman and I can 100 I'm not shocked as to why some women don't like Trump for sure like I mean I get it you know what yeah. I mean but I still think that um a lot of the stuff that he was doing was good, you know, yeah. like Trump on like foreign policy and like the way he was able to like negotiate with people. And yeah, did you see what he said about, um, I don't know if you saw in an interview, he said like, he's just like a guy that gets shit done. That's why I liked him too. Like he said, uh, I think he, to threaten the Taliban leader, like he wanted something, the Taliban to do something. And like the Taliban leader guy was like, why did you just send me a picture of my house? And like Trump's <laughs> like, that's for you to figure out. Yeah. So like Trump wanted the Taliban to do something. So he like sent the Taliban leader a photo of the guy's house. Yeah. And he's like, bro, I know where you are right now. Yeah. But like, I feel like people want a leader to be soft, but like the country's got to be run like how someone runs a fucking business, man. Like it's yeah. got to be a and bit a cutthroat of, in a way. That, and that's why I think a lot of people liked him. You know, what's yeah. interesting. This whole concept is, I always find so interesting. 
um, <clears throat> these people that, you know, are obviously like elected officials, politicians, whatever. And just in general, for some reason nowadays, it seems as though like everyone expects everyone to be perfect, but themselves. Yeah. It's like, we all know we're not perfect. We all know we make mistakes. We all know we're not like exactly like we're human. And like, especially when it comes to these like officials or people that people view as like in, uh, in, you know, in, in places, places of power or like places of fame or popularity, it's like everyone looks outward and they're like, you should be doing everything exactly right. Kind of how I think you should, but it's, it's also just like, none of that's realistic. Right. No. And I think people forget to forget to see that. Like, I don't know what's the actual function of what this person is doing and does it actually benefit people? So the, the whole thing with Biden to me was like, people just didn't want Trump. Yeah. It felt that, like they just didn't how, want That's how Trump. unpopular he was. Yeah. That's how much people hated Trump. Like but he, then it's, he pretty much lost to himself. Yeah. And, and then you, but then you have like, I don't know, man, this, the mainstream media just. It, yeah. It, I mean, the media is totally against him, but. It's just crazy. Yeah. It's also crazy how that's a, such a real thing. He was completely thing. handicapped. Yeah. It's I such mean, it's a real fun. thing. Just that the media and the way it just portrays a side is so real. It's not even like a debatable thing. I know. I always wonder why. Because at the end of the day, it's all about money. No, the, the, the way I think about it too is like, I think people just think that like the media like has these opinions and they're just crazy. Right. But at the end of the day, bro, like it's got to be about money. Right. Well, like it's got to be, everything's about money. So for the media to be pushing these agendas, it's got to come from somewhere. You know, the media is here. It's got to be being fed from somewhere. And it's like, they got to be, you know, whatever, whoever owns the media is, is pushing these agendas for some reason. Right. Yeah. I don't know if it's, I mean, I think it's to divide people. I genuinely think yeah. that's the answer and, I, and it's it's fuck because like the it to me it's like I'm looking at this and I'm like man are they like left and right you know leaders are they I feel like they're all in the room being like haha like the, it's like it's not even as divided as we think it is it's just portrayed out where portrayed. It's like everyone could like pick a side and fight each other and be emotional about this decision or that decision and attack each other and it's just like there's no actual I mean, benefit that, there they do that with everyone they they do that with like everything man uh I mean COVID crazy because it just shows you how powerful the media is that's the that's the lesson we learned from covid was like we all have a fucking screen now yeah and whoever's sitting in a room or a fucking you know yeah wherever they're sitting in this world they say all right send the message out to everyone's screens and guess what we fucking obeyed yeah People they could put listen. anything on our phones and on our tvs and we're gonna believe it anything yeah Right. Why, why do you think people we will talk about this then? Why do you think people lost or, or just don't think like they're not into critically thinking. They're just into listening to an opinion on someone. That Again, they... I think it's the same thing as like the global warming thing where like people it's, it's a mind fuck. You have to admit that what you thought this was is not, is not what you thought it was. And I think that yeah. scares people. The thought of that like scares people like some people like, actually trust the government like like i guess every COVID people everyone that like believed covid like trust the government which is funny like, isn't that, that like weird do the weirdest like part. why do you think that the government or like the elite gives a fuck about you like why but like people actually think that so I don't know. to change those people's minds they have to admit like the government doesn't you know like yeah. what i thought life was was really not the way this world works and i think that scares people and they don't want to admit that you know what's the funniest part in relation to the the vid thing is like the 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 fact that everyone could agree with this one simple thing and was like this is the dumbest shit I ever heard was the rationalization. You remember when you go into a restaurant and they'd be like you got you got to wear your mask to walk through but you when you sit down you could take it off. Doesn't matter what side there was everyone no logic. was like everyone was like yeah that doesn't make sense though. The same people who are like you need to have a mask on who are mad at other people for not having a mask on you even have that conversation with them and they're like, yeah, that that's a little stupid though. But like, they still want to protect us. It's like, how can you believe those two things are the same? Yeah. And everyone in LA and Hollywood at first was fucking yeah. posting Instagram stories, shaming other creators. Like I know, cause we traveled during COVID, right? Yeah. And I would see like from celebrities to other influencers, like not bashing us specifically, but right. just bashing anyone that was not following the rules and stuff like that. Yeah. And you know, and then they, everyone just does a fucking 180 after that yeah like a year later two years later everyone's like shitting on COVID, and i'm like where the fuck were you guys two years ago yeah you know is it so that's the thing is it like is it just this, this virtual virtue signaling like safe i can do this because it's safe and people will think i'm good because i'm listening to this like this narrative i guess so yeah 
I it's guess f- so. I mean, I guess it's what they're like. Our audience is all probably mostly Trump people. Not all. Right, right. But like, I guess their audience is the opposite, right? So they got to post. At the end of the day, they're a business too, right? So yeah. they got to post what their audience wants to see. We just don't have that audience, which is, I guess, because of what we've done our entire career. career. Yeah, We've tried to do what, you know, people like what I like now. They find what I find funny, funny. Yeah. So whatever I like, kind of people like. Yeah, it's crazy. I built this group of people that follow us Yeah. that pretty much like what I like. Yeah, you become the same taste, humor, taste makers. Same, yeah. It's fucking wild, man. So, so it's crazy now because, you know, you go from like the different forms of content over time into like now the podcast stuff, right? Which is so like left, not, not, not politically into speaking at all, but so left of what you've done. How has that changed like the landscape for you as far as like creating content or like networking and all that stuff? Has, has the podcasting like made that? Podcast was a big move for us recently. Yeah. Launching that was huge for sure. I think, I mean, that was, yeah, you always got to look at what's the next step. How are you going to evolve? And uh, I think Nelk, we will honestly do. I think Nelk, if we're all still around, I think we can do it till we're fucking 45. If we want to. Yeah. We could. We could still do some sort of, I I believe that. You know? I love traveling. We could still go on a trip at 40 years old or 45 years old or fucking 60 years old. Yeah. Well, like, how long like the boys are all seniors and we fucking senior trip pack up, <laughs> leave the wives, <laughs> right? Yo, dude, head to Tijuana. Oh, I wish I had a kid fucking five years ago. Like, can you imagine that when everyone has kids and shit too? And like, <laughs> yeah. that's going to make the videos even better, bro. So funny. God, like all bringing fucking... our kids out to fucking whatever. Steinies is Steinies kids a loser. Like for sure. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Steinies on camera. I'm joking. No, we love you, bro. All right, guys. Quick interruption for one of our sponsors, BetterHelp. Uh, you guys have probably heard it before if you've been watching the pod for a little bit, but I want to talk about this again. Um, therapy, do not underestimate the power of it. A lot of us may feel like, you know, we're not ready to talk about what we want to talk about, specifically with people maybe who are closer to us in our lives, because maybe it's a little bit more of a sensitive topic. But with BetterHelp, you guys, you don't have to rely on necessarily like a best friend to confide in, to talk to. You guys will have therapists like literally at your will from your computer from the you know the sanctity of your home you don't have to worry about driving to like a a consult or or driving to the therapist which you know i do pretty much every week but you guys can do it from the comfort of your own home um the convenience of your own home it's super cost effective trained professionals you guys i just cannot emphasize enough how important i personally feel therapy is for people because it's one thing to think about you know an idea or a topic or a trauma in our lives and we kind of like go in circles in our own mind about like you know, what's the, how do I move forward? How do I move through this? And it's really helpful to have someone who has professional insight and also can just take you out of your normal train of thought to understand a situation. So if you guys want to give BetterHelp a shot, go to betterhelp.com slash raw talk. You get 10% off your first month. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash raw talk. Get 10% off, support your boy. Let's get back into this podcast. Um, No, it's, I get it. So, okay. In regards to the podcast, like, has it, has it just been... But yeah, as I was saying, you could do yeah. the podcast forever though. hundred percent. So, cause it's so easy. It's so, you just chill and talk. And I think that was, yeah, it's a big move and I, I love it. It's easy to do. It's not really like work. You get to meet so many cool people. Yeah. Like what a blessing to be able to meet all these people that we've done. Even yeah. since you've been involved, right? Like Bro. Mark Cuban. Yeah. Mark Cuban. Like you get to sit down with Mark Cuban and fucking listen to all his knowledge and, and shit, like right stuff. in front of him. Bro, it's, it's sick. It's a great, it's a great thing. It is very, it is. very big blessing. It's cool. And the, the thing that I, I really like about it is like, and I think people listening w- would agree, like they evolve with it. Like the audience grows with it. Cause your audience mm-hmm. like, dude, for the amount of time you've been doing this and, and myself included, it's like a lot of guys who started watching me, we talked about this briefly before when they were younger, they're like, like in their thirties or in their mid twenties. And it's like, that's such a large amount right, of time right. to have someone involved with you. And then to evolve into like content that I think, in my opinion, is obviously a lot more meaningful than pranks. Not that pranks are necessary or enjoyable or fun, but like the the content from the podcast side of things is like completely 180. Yeah. And it's really connecting people on like a deeper level with, I think the brand and you and, and the people involved, I guess on that note is in regards to Nelk, in regards to the podcast and, and everything that you've done, what would you say as far as, I don't know, like some sort of advice to a creator who is coming up. Cause a lot of, I know a lot of people watch you or watch us, watch things that we do. And they're like, they want to emulate or be like, 
what would you say to a creator who is coming up and he's like just getting started today in order to be successful obviously like takes time but like in terms of content you think or just like it's tough i guess to <clears throat> everything everything i think i mean you kind of said it earlier um, i mean i think specifically with content okay even if you're doing a podcast or whatever you're doing you got to be shareable you, okay. you got to have a reason if someone's watching your shit you got to think like how is someone that i don't even know it's got, don't think of your friend i mean maybe your friends too but it can't be inside jokes how is someone that i don't even know gonna like share this to one of their friends and there's gotta be that reason you know yeah. like there's gotta be something unique maybe it's funny maybe you're learning something maybe maybe you're fucking hot as shit if you're a girl like i don't know you know right. you have a fat rack and everyone's sharing your rack but like yeah. it's gotta be something you know yeah so i would say you just gotta be different you gotta stand out and yeah you got to be shareable when you're small too yeah and now it's interesting because yeah you have tiktok now too so i think a year or two ago that was kind of tough to go viral but now guess what anyone could fucking go viral on tiktok yeah. on tiktok too so and shorts and even instagram yeah. so i think that's content wise you got to be like you got to stand out man there's so many people doing it that it's just like dude how you think you're gonna make it doing this type of shit too yeah and, and i mean people say do what you love too but I think at the beginning, like, do what you love, but also, dude, do what works. Yeah. At the beginning, you got to do what works. Yeah. You know? I think it's hard for people to understand what works because a lot of people ask me that all the time. Like, they're looking for, like, people come to me all the time at the gym and they'll be like, yo, what do I do to do this? And they're, like, they're almost looking for, like, some answer that I is... think we just have this. We just got the secret recipe. I don't know. We got know. the Riz or what? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, right? Like. I don't know. Maybe it's like, how do you become a basketball player? Like. You're born with it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, some Obviously people not have it. Born with it but. Some people have it and some people don't. Yeah. That's one thing I've learned throughout this shit too. It's like, you got to be fucking ready to do this shit. You yeah. want to do this shit. You got to be ready. You got to be mentally ready. Yeah. You can't fucking quit when shit gets tired. Like when you get tired and you want to quit, everyone wants to quit. But like, I've seen people quit. Like I've seen a lot of people quit. Yeah. Like they, it gets tough and they just fucking slow down and they quit. Yeah. Because you can't be weak, bro. You can't be mentally weak. You got to fucking, even me, if you're feeling down, go fuck off for a bit. Like, take your chill time and then get back to work. Like, if you want to really do it, you know? Yeah, without a doubt. Like. So, so on that note, as a, as a, not, not just as a creator in the content you make, but as a human, what do you think the most important thing is to be able to sustain yourself in this industry? That's definitely one of the aspects that you just said right there. I don't know. But beyond, beyond that aspect of like, you can't that, quit. That really is. I think that's the biggest key. Cause like at the end of the day, if you, I don't know, like if someone doesn't make it, that means they quit. Like you should just never, I don't know. It's kind of, yeah. it's stupid and simple, but it's like, bro, if you just don't quit, you're going to make it. Yeah. I always like talk about, up. but then people will make excuses. So they'll quit and they won't admit that they quit. Cause they'll be like, well, this happened. Or like, yeah. you know how many people blamed COVID for fucking like, they're like, well, like I had COVID and it's like, dude, that's like you're a yeah. loser straight up. Like yeah. you can't, you can't make excuses. Yeah. And I think people will make excuses to make themselves feel better. Right. That's a fact. Yeah. Like they'll, yeah. they'll make excuses to make themselves feel better. But at the end of the day, it's like you quit. That's Straight it. up. So you got to like, just don't fucking quit. Like, yeah, I know it's it. And I tell, I tell people too all the time. Cause when they ask me that, I talk about consistency over time. And cause that's all it is, is like consistently trying to learn, to grow, to like take your feedback and try to like change it, see what works, it doesn't work. And I think, like you said, people get to a point where they're like, they fucking, they flop. It's not what they want. And they don't have the tenacity to keep moving forward. Then they'll look around and be like, well, this didn't work because of these reasons. Right. Yeah. Then th that's the key. Right. So then beyond this part is like, then now what's really important is like how bad and how important is this for you to actually succeed at? Cause that's the thing. I think a lot of people want something like this. Because they see it and they go, oh, that's easy. They're sitting on couches talking. But it's not like we just got here just by sitting on couches talking, which I think nowadays you probably could make a really good podcast if you were great at it. But I think people <clears throat> fail to see how much goes into everything as a whole. And they just see like a success and they go, oh, I tried it. It didn't work to the same degree. Fuck this. I'm going to keep doing that. That's the, that's the biggest thing I see too. And like I, I can tell now smaller creators that like because i'll watch everything right like everyone i'm watching studying like yeah. you know and you can really tell like not only by their content but i can tell like someone's work ethic you know by like i can just see it yeah i can see it and i think i can tell instantly with smaller creators like who's gonna make it even for if sure. they're not popping off right this for second sure. i think that there's like people that i see that i'm like yo i know they're gonna make it 
because they're so hard working. Yeah. I don't know if you know those guys, the the boys of ninety eight. They came yeah. to your gym opening too, I saw. Really? But um yeah, they're they grew up on my street in Canada. It's so weird. Are they pop? You think they're gonna they're, pop? They have they got like hundred and thirty K, but they're like they're really hard workers. And they're they're someone that like I see like they're they're slowly growing, but they're like really hard workers. And I could tell, like I know them personally, but I also uh I I see what they're doing. Like they're working really hard and they're not stopping and they're grinding and they're traveling. And it's like that's someone just one person that I thought of like you could tell that they're they're just never going to quit. And that's and what it takes. Right? Yeah, that's ultimately what it takes. Why do you think it's hard for people to accept that, like, you know, when you fuck <clears throat> up, you just have to keep going? Why do you think people go like, ah, they take the easy way and they say, fuck it? Because hmm. have you ever, have you ever along your whole career? I think they just, I don't know, they're just weak. <laughs> that's true. It's they're fucked. weak-minded. They're is weak-minded, it, but is, it, is it weak or is it just There's, like. I'm trying to think of a nice way to say it. But they I'm don't like, know better. I feel like people just don't know better. I feel like people are taught, like, almost sometimes know. taught to quit, even though we're always told maybe, don't quit. Maybe, Like, because, you know, a lot of people, because this is the thing. I think when the going gets tough, some people shut down and some people don't. Because I've been through times, too, where it's like, yeah, I've been broke. Or even sometimes you get unhappy. But, like, you can't, you know, you can't just stop. Because, yeah. like, for me, I'm just never going to stop, no matter what. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think the circle around you has enforced that in you for and sure. not, yeah because well it's all who you're around too for sure yeah because i think a lot of people who quit i think they tend to probably have people in their circle who are like yeah like it's hard or they they, they will talk them down even before they get to going and then almost like coddle them when they're and then like almost like people seemingly convince other people to not succeed at their goals because they're not succeeding at their goals that could be circles. one thing that could be one thing so it's like how do we maybe like back home when you're like, yeah, you're just around like a bunch of people that are working yeah. like nine to fives or whatever. And you're trying to achieve your dream. That yeah. could be a factor. But I mean, yeah. So I'm how would sure. you teach someone to like, to, I don't know if you can to not look outwards and just like, yo, if this is important, go. Cause that's the truth. That's that. That is how you succeed. Yeah. It's, and that's how I, you not quit. But that's everything in life is like, it's the most simple cliche shit. I know, that like, fuck. that's what it is. Like people it ask is. me all the time, like, how do you do it? And it's just like, dude, just don't like, don't just quit. do it. Like, I don't know what to say. Like there's no secret recipe. Yeah. Like don't shut down. Like as long as you don't stop, you're eventually going to do it. Right. If something's not working, try something new. Yeah. If that doesn't work, try something else new. Like, you know, if your dreams to be like in our position or be a creator, like just keep trying, try new shit. Like, yeah. And as, as long as you don't stop you're I feel like you're eventually going to do it. Yeah. Now, as far as uh, this kind of not not quitting, obviously, I'm not. This is not in regards to Jesse or anything, but um, I know you've obviously talked about this stuff in the past. But um, how big was Jesse in the success of Nelk overall? Huge, huge. Yeah, massive. It was me. It was me and him, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. When I when I met him, we probably had 30k on YouTube. I had 30k. Yeah. Um, dude, he was huge. I mean, I don't know when he left that, but like. Yeah, he was. Could have. There's no way we would be here without him. Yeah, without a doubt. Right, but um. Yeah, I think I think with him, I, like, is I didn't want to p- people to think that I was talking about him with that. But no, um, no, of course yeah, not. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. But he did eventually get to a point where he was like, "Hey, it's not for me anymore." Yeah, yeah. Like, but for he sure. made that and then, decision. And I mean, like, he left at a good time and also set himself up like very well. Of course. So for him, it's like you know he still owns a huge piece of Happy Dad. Yeah. He's now he's he didn't quit. He's like doing he's just doing something different now. Yes. So yeah. Yeah, but Jesse, I mean, yeah, he was huge, right? Like it's crazy everything we did. Yeah. When I was in Palm Springs, like because I went to Palm Springs recently to chill, right. and um, I totally forgot. But me and Jesse like roadied to VidCon for the first time. Oh. And in his car years ago, and it broke down. Yeah, years ago. Like I'm yeah. fuck six seven years ago. Yeah. And it broke down. His car, we're on the way to VidCon. We're almost we're almost at VidCon. We drove from Canada. Fuck. So fucking 30 hours. Holy like, not shit, even. 34 dude. hours, probably. We got two hours to go. I feel like His that's something only Canadians fucking, do, bro. Like, get on drive? road trips. Road trips like that. Like, Europeans yeah. and Canadians. Roadies are dope. But it's like, people from America. You love roadies, too, no? I love them. But, like, it's not normal. Like, people from America don't go, like, east to west coast. So, like, take flights. It's just cheaper. The road trip? Yeah. I don't know. Flying but, from Toronto to LA? Oh, I don't know. It's way cheaper because you probably fill up your tank like three, four times, uh, maybe. I'm not so, sure. Maybe so, I'm wrong. So just you and him were on that road Florida trip. Florida could be like two gas tanks from Toronto. Maybe what? I'm tripping. No. But it's way cheaper. It's way cheaper. Flights from Toronto sometimes could be like over, you know, back then when you're broke. 
Yeah. You got to hop in the car and we fucking, we would get a cooler and put a cooler in the middle and go to the grocery store and buy fucking wraps and lunch meat and snacks. And we didn't even have money to eat out. I love that. I swear to God, like we like at gas it. stations, like we wouldn't even buy food in the gas station. Like we'd make wraps, like get the, yeah, get the yeah. mayo, put turkey, <laughs> yeah. some cheese and just like eat wraps. I toss some cheese strings in the cooler too. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's what we did. But yeah, our car broke down in Palm Springs for five days. We were stuck in Palm Springs. Not at the car. Like you must have went somewhere. We just stayed at a motel. Oh my and we're, god! Like we took it to a repair shop, and every day they're like, "All right, we're gonna fix it. We're gonna fix it." They never fixed it, and then like we almost missed missed VidCon, so we had to post on Snapchat and say like, "Yo, is there anyone that can like come to Palm Springs and pick us up and like drive us to VidCon?" And these guys came to pick them up, came to pick us up. I'm I was thinking about it, and I'm, I feel so bad because I don't remember their names, but I feel really bad. But like, I'm gonna do something for them. Yeah, I totally yeah. forgot, and it's really bad of me that I haven't. But I'm gonna like find that video, and I'm gonna track those boys down. Yeah, because, fucking send um, me a tweet or some shit. I'll, yeah, I'll send it over. But uh, yeah, that's fucked up. But it was crazy because they came and they picked us up and they they drove us to VidCon, and, and I think they let back? us like sleep on their floor and shit, like yeah. in their like <laughs> like hotel and shit. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. And man. then eventually like, the car the car got fixed, so we had to like go back and get it. Yeah, and then we drove home. Have you ever had any but, other moments, any other like crazy experiences like that with fans? Yeah, I mean, we've stayed at we used to stay at fans' houses, right? Yeah, that was how we started. So. We didn't have money for hotels or anything. So we just literally post on Snapchat like, hey, we're in St. Louis or whatever. Like who who will let us crash at their house? Yeah. And then I would vet them too. Like I'll message them for a bit. And then I like, you know, okay, like where would we sleep? Where do you live? Blah, 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 blah. Then I would get on FaceTime with them and like talk to them and then yeah. feel them out. But we never had a weird experience. I think because we stopped doing it, we probably would have eventually. Yeah. But yeah. The first guy we stayed at, his name was like Magic Mike. <laughs> wow, we've done a ton of videos with him and shit he's a okay. dope guy yeah um he like yeah i'm not sure what kind of condition he has but he has some sort of like condition mental condition oh, okay um but yeah he was like the nicest guy ever and we like slept on his couch and stuff Damn. like that and you, you know when crazy. i you know when i realized the fan base was crazy like really crazy when i personally realized it was when we went to ireland oh yeah that's crazy and we were gonna have that meet in ireland that's crazy and we were having that meetup and then like we were like in that park we were mm -hmm. all in that car and like the massive horde of fucking irish kids that were chasing we didn't us. expect that no dude because we announced the meetup brad yes. came to join us and then we announced the meetup and then it well, this literally was a riot we pull up yeah and cops were already there people were chasing us down the road yes and then we couldn't pull up how many years ago was this four probably Fuck, dude, it was so long ago. Europe was, yeah, it was crazy, bro. Some do we've done so much dope Fucking shit. But we couldn't pull up. The cops even said, if you guys pulled up there, we would have arrested you. Yeah, and then we tried to go to that bar afterwards and like try to sneakily get them to go there. But they, but they, they saw us and were like, get yeah. the fuck out of here. Yeah, that was that, that was, was when crazy. I was like, damn, this is this is like real crazy fucking. And I'm like, we're in Ireland. It really is like a fucking. I don't know, man. It's like we're like it's like a Justin Bieber fan base of like males. It's interesting, right? It's yeah, so some some fans are kind of like like they're a bit, you know, if you're a fan, like you got to just treat us like a normal person. If you want us to really respect you, I'm just being honest. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, I get it cuz they're so shocked, but like, yeah, I the way I say it is like you're forced to meet a lot of people in this position, and then some people are just naturally weird. Yeah. And then some people all like they'll come up and dab me up and be like, "Yo, bro, like fucking love your videos man like yeah you guys are like i love you guys been watching you forever i'm like how like that's the dopest thing you could say yeah dab you up take a photo and i'm like oh that guy was dope yeah it's and some guys will come up and like completely fanboy and like yeah, scream like and, shit, and it's like sweating right, shaking dude, just relax you know yeah but i get it and it's still cool yeah you know the audience is is crazy man um yeah. do you it's crazy are there are there other like would you compare it to any other audiences that you've like seen or been a part of like on youtube like you know like no low, i don't think it's like it's like nothing. Yeah. It's like nothing. Maybe like we're not, we don't have as many followers as like other people and stuff like that. Yeah. But no, I think, I think ours is the best. I wouldn't trade it for anyone's out there. Yeah. Ours is the best. Like even if you have 20 million, like ours is cool. Cause it's like, I don't know. Some of these guys are big, but like if they go to like a college party or like a bar, like Bro. they're not going to get the love that we get. Like if they I might even get chirped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's funny. Like they can't just walk around everywhere and shit. Like, yeah, 
It's funny, dude. They, like, they'll probably get chirped. Yeah. Like, we're, we never get chirped anywhere we go. Bro, like, every time I've ever gone to a bar since we started making content, it's like, there's dudes coming up to me. Yeah. Like, bro, I've seen you on this But anywhere, shit. like, you go to a football game or, like... Anywhere there's a bunch anywhere, of dudes. Anywhere the boys are. Yeah. We're getting love. It's such a chicks, crazy thing. we're still working on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The It'll come. Is, It'll come. Like we said, never quit. I think it's the... I think the podcast... I think the podcast probably switches it up a little bit. Because that's when I've seen more more girls that come up and be like, I see you on the podcast. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's rare. Like, yeah. it's, it's literally mostly a male-dominant fan base. It is. I think the ours time. is like 85% male or 90% yeah, male. Yeah, mine's the same shit, man. It's been like that for years, too. Even before linking up with you guys. Yeah. It's crazy. But you know what? I think girls, too, they're... It's like kind of... I think some girls get there's got to be some girls out there right because there's yeah. we, i see it there's 15 percent, but i think girls will come up to us too but i think sometimes girls get clowned for actually liking milk uh, i see what you're saying because there's got to be some girls that are actually like yo this shit's funny yeah you know but sure. i think there it's not really cool for them to come up like guys yeah, that's I what it. I noticed. I get it. Quick interruption from one of our sponsors, Green Chef. Now check this out. This is obviously one of the dopest products uh, because I'm gonna tell you right now, I have the hardest time cooking my meals because I number one, I don't like to think about the ingredients that I need. I don't like to think about planning it or organizing it. The cool thing about Green Chef is it's all done for you, right? It's super convenient. It's super easy. It's customizable. Basically, what you do is you go, you sign up. You're like, okay, I want to have like these types of meals, whether you're like vegetarian or vegan, whatever it is, and then you you pick what meals you want. They'll give you a plan to follow based on like the information that you input. And then what they'll do is they'll send you basically like all the ingredients that are required to make these meals. So it's not, I guess not your typical like meal prep company service. It's more of like a meal kit. So it allows you to still cook, which at the same time, taking the guesswork out of like having to figure out what to get at the grocery store. So it's all sent to you. So it is more easy. It is more seamless. And like the guesswork is kind of taken out of it. And for me, that makes the most sense because I don't like going to the grocery store and trying to figure out exactly all the ingredients I need. And I don't want to go down the aisles and get the wrong stuff and I have to go back. And so it's all sorted for you. It's all easy. And again, you customize it based on your diet, how you want your diet to be, what you, you know, how many calories, all that kind of stuff. So if you guys want to give it a shot, I promise you won't be disappointed. Go to greenchef.com slash raw talk 60. Use code raw talk 60 to get 60% off your order plus free shipping. Give it a shot. You guys will not, again, you will not be upset that you tried it. But again, greenchef.com slash raw talk 60. Put in code raw talk 60. You get 60% off your order. Let's get back into this podcast. Um, about Maybe girls. that's just an excuse, actually. Fuck. Um, so as far as girls, have you found it to be like harder because of all the popularity, because of all the like success and the expectations to have like a strong relationship? Not real, like in terms of trusting girls or just everything in general. Yeah, like because I've always, you know, my my biggest thing, my biggest issue with with women is like trusting intentions and trusting that like I don't really have an issue with that. No, no, because I don't get fooled at all. Yeah. I don't. You just know? Yeah, I just know. I've never put myself in that position. I've only like really dated two chicks. Yeah. My whole life. So Like seriously dating. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like but yeah, I mean, messing around with random girls, that's totally different. That's that's sketchy as fuck. But in terms of like actually dating them and like you're saying like getting used. Yeah. No, I'm pretty good with that. So then how do you, so that then my question is really like, how do you start to determine, like, how do you determine that that's not that kind of girl? Like, how are you, how are your, what are your markers? Just know. You just know. Just know. I just feel it out. Yeah. And like some girls you're meeting, you're just like, man, I would never date that chick. Yeah. Like she's, maybe she's hot, but I'm just like, man, I would never date that chick. (laughs) Would I slay her? Absolutely. Yeah, I get it. And and we have. Yes, of course. But you don't date them. Of course. That's funny, man. Yeah. (laughs) You You just know, but some people are suckers. I don't know how they don't see it. Like you just get fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Some people just get rinsed, but I I just laugh because I'm just like, man, I could see that. I'll see other guys with girls too. And I'm like, damn. Yeah. She getting you. you, You're going to get rinsed. But fuck man. Yeah. That shit's tough, right? Yeah. That's a tough one. But yeah, especially like, I mean, it'd be hard to trust a girl from LA. Yeah. I know everyone says why is LA? Why is that a thing? Anyone really? I mean. Cause there's so many options here. Yeah. Like we're, we're competing with NBA players, NFL players, rappers. Yeah. Like billionaires, like yeah. fuck even rappers, like billionaires, bro. Yeah. Right. Like they're all in these circles. Like if we go to an LA party or a Miami party, bro, you could have some fucking, right? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. They're probably it's better true. looking than us too. Like, fuck dude, we're like, rinsed. Like some guys just have me beat, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, do you ever see that? <laughs> yeah, of course. They're better looking, more money. 
fuck. Yeah, probably not more jacked than you, but yeah, they're jacked. Right. Yeah. Probably bigger horn too. Like you just <laughs> fuck. <laughs> yeah, you're funny. Yeah, I got a question in regards to I because I've always been impressed by this. It just much like Salim, the uh the stone face. Like how how do you perfect that without laughing? Just in pranks and all that. I've just been always good at it. Even from the beginning. Yeah, just been good at it. How? I don't know. Because, like, dude, we practice. Me and Jacob will fuck around and, like, <laughs> practice. What, right? Yeah, you can never do it. It's like the. the <laughs> I'm not as good as, as I once was. Why? Why do you I think? just laugh now more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's the. Bro, I, I swear. We did a moaning. We did a moaning in a golfer's ear, and the guy just, like, freaked out, and I just laughed because it was so funny. Fuck. I think it's the pranks that, like, I'm, I'm not really, like, I didn't invent. Like, Salim, like, the moaning yeah he mastered thing. that yeah so like the moaning's like not really my thing so when i do it like it's so funny it's yeah. so funny in real life that i'm just like fuck but ones that are my style like i'm good yeah because you you're so good at that like just look like looking <laughs> you're, you're just like <laughs> it's so funny right it's bro, so that's the funniest shit i know it's so like funny. when you really mean like you just really feel like you mean exactly what you're doing and you're like i'll kind of like think of like what i'm gonna say beforehand like one little one-liner like yeah. I'll think of like a one-liner. Do then you like once... bite the inside of your cheek or some shit? Like how do you? No, I just do it, bro. That's the thing. I do it. And I, I just, just like. I feel like I have to like like bite my cheek. You just zone out. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the clip. I'm thinking of the fans and like how much you're gonna laugh at this. Like I'm like, all right, I gotta get this. Yeah. <laughs> have there been any moments like like that that have gone like really south where you've gotten like? Because I remember uh, remember I that mean, guy. Remember been that arrested guy swung twice. on you. Yeah, I've been arrested twice. I've been yeah, I've been punched once by this big black guy. Yeah, in a, in a fucking in a store, right? Like a Walmart or some yeah, type of shit. Yeah, in a Walmart. Uh, it was the sneezing prank. Yeah, he <laughs> fucking we we did the sneezing. Yeah, and then he's like, "Don't I don't do that funny shit," and he just punched me in the face, and then he chased me out of the store, and he he like stood in front of the fucking automatic doors, like you know Walmart. There's like an entrance and an exit. Yeah, and like I was trying to go out the exit, and like he's just boxing me in. And then he, he got on his phone and he pulled his phone out and he's like, you want to go viral? Like, and he punched me again. He's like, all right, we're going viral now and shit. And he posted it on his Facebook. <laughs> it probably went viral. I don't know. Yeah. We did a video with him after. That's did you see so that? We went back. We did another prank. How'd you find him? On his Facebook. Oh, you messaged him. He posted him. It on Facebook and I messaged him and like, I, he like, he found it funny after he saw the video. Yeah. And then he's just like, I was like, yo, you want to prank Salim? <laughs> so we went back to another store and like, I told him to pull up. And then like I go in the print, I go in the store and I'm like, yo, Salim, the guy's here. And then we like he chased us out of the store again and shit. Dude. It was funny. Content wise, have you have I mean, I don't think so much of this stuff. Have you ever faked anything? No. Remember how back in the day, like uh like Fousey tube, like these people were getting popped for like faking fucking pranks and shit. Yeah. You never actually faked a prank. No. Yeah. Think I think that's what kind of that that is honestly one thing that made us take off too because when that whole fake pranks thing was going on yeah that was a that was a massive deal we um we just said let's do shit that can't be faked so that's when we started doing like more pranks and like public and shit like college lecture pranks like stuff that people can't be like yo this is fake yeah they didn't hire all these kids to sit and in yeah the I, classroom. Hear, I hear that a lot i never really thought of it but i guess yeah people say like yo you guys really took off because like you just didn't do fake shit and like for us, that was so easy. Like once we found our rhythm, it was just like, it was just easy. And yeah, it just, it feels like cheating, right? To kind of. Yeah. You know, it's interesting as a whole. People still fake shit. There's like people, like a lot of pranksters, a lot of pranks I see, like someone will show it to me. Be like, yo, like you guys should do this. I'm like, bro, that's fake. Yeah. Like. You know, what's interesting about this, your success and the success of Nelk and all this overall. It seems like everything you've said kind of lends to the fact that you've kind of just, just kept it fucking real. And you've just been yourself and you've been like, this is, this is what we like. This is and and even as we, as we talked about content progressing, you're even realizing more so now just to continue to do it that way. Like you're just doing something because you genuinely enjoy it. You have fun doing it. You like it. It's the truth. That's the key. Cause people could see through fake shit. They yeah. could see through it so easy. I think on social for sure on social. Yeah. Like really Especially longer just like, format and dude, it just like, I can't sleep at night like that. Like, you know, like, like if you were just like, What's good? It's good. Yo, you look high as fuck right now. Yeah, I was working out. Holy shit. You... I, I could see you. I always know when you're high. You, just, you, you guys haven't so... even seen each other yet? No, no. No, oh. I saw him earlier. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? <laughs> How am I not the best host? <laughs> what am I mad at? What am I mad at? I don't know. I just wanted to ask you. Are you okay? I'm great. I'm great, dude. 
fun. Right. What do you have the most fun doing now? Because um, you have all this shit now, and you're building all you're building all this dope shit. Like, what do you really have fun doing? Um, like with the business? Nah, just in life. In life? Yeah. I mean, I feel like you're like me. Like, I, I, I don't. A lot of my fun still is in regards to the business. Yeah, I mean, a lot of our fun is in regards to the business too. I think I really loved like the Russia trip and traveling. Yeah. I really love traveling. Like, I think that's a huge passion of mine. And like, I like going to places that are like way different now, you know, like it's so cool. Like going to Russia is just like, yo, you don't know what it's going to be like. Like you have no idea what it's going to be like, you know, yeah. and seeing just different cultures and stuff. So I think traveling, man, is just like, it's such a blessing too to, to travel the way we right. travel. Right. Yeah. Cause not everyone can just go to Russia and stuff and kind of do what we did and see what we saw. Yeah. But I think that's something that 2023, especially based on the response of the video yeah. is like, dude, I think 2023 is just like the real big, like international year. And like where we do fucking like we're, th we're talking about Israel now. Yeah. What um, about like Egypt? I always want to go Egypt, to Egypt and then Africa in general. Yeah. One of our sales reps, Connor, shout out Connor. Um, for happy dad he he messaged me and said um and this is how shit starts like it's just like like he messaged me and said like yo my best friend my best friend's girlfriend is the princess of zimbabwe <laughs> what yeah and she, he's like if you guys want to go to zimbabwe like they'll completely take care of you <laughs> so like that could be our africa plug like we go and it's just like that that's the way to do it like you go to russia you go with like islam and hasbula like if you go to africa you go with the fucking princess of zimbabwe and he sent me all the shit we can do like waterfalls like zimbabwe has like legit safaris it's like so real safaris it's fucking villages and all that shit like can you imagine that, that trip? So fun, like wouldn't yeah. that be sick yeah and we get to film it and it's classified as work yeah no it's a, it's a huge that's lesson. what i find fun it's interesting how you mentioned that though how things actually come to fruition like how they start is that's lot what of i realized like too that. i gotta for nelk like sometimes i get lazy but i gotta be the one like putting these videos together because like i have all the connections a lot too right yeah like even the islam and hasbula thing was like i had to like kind of Put that together like no one's gonna put that together unless i do it right yeah like i, I gotta it. hit up the manager because i'm tight with islam's manager yeah ali and then i hit up hasbula's guys and i knew that he was like launching um an nft so i said you know want to do a video around that time yeah you know just kind of learning i know how business works so i know how other people's minds work yeah so it's just kind of you know, but these are the details connecting that I, the dots. Yeah, these are the details that I find interesting. That, like a lot of people wouldn't recognize. They just think, oh, you're just showing up making content. Yeah. No, like I just like I was like, damn, like imagine going to Dagestan with Hasbula. Like yeah. that'd be fucking crazy. So I hit up his manager and I was just like, yo, what do you think about this? Like, and he said, yeah, like you know. It's weird how every. Uh, it's and then weird we did. It's we did some merch too. Yeah, I saw the so shirts. We probably. I mean, we made we made Hasbula a shit ton of money. Yeah. So like they're going to be fucking happy and yeah. now they're going to want to do more shit with us. Yeah. Cause when you make someone money for right? sure, and that, that's the great opportunity we have is like, you know, at the end of the day, people want to make money. So if we can make other people money, they're going to want to work with us too. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's, I mean, it's a give and take for sure. Yeah, and then we get great content out of it too. Like Bro. it's dope. It's, it's such a blessing, man. I'm, 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 I'm grateful for all the time. And I, I, I want to say this on camera cause I, I, you know, I've told you, I think in person, but I want to tell you, like, you know, tell you on camera so it's not, not up to discussion, but I'm grateful that you've had me be a part of all this stuff for so long that I'm on the podcast. I have fun doing it and yeah. I really enjoy meeting the people. Still, no, I'm so, glad, I'm glad you're on the pod. Yeah. I think it's um, great. I, I just want to, I don't want to, I don't want to not say that because I don't want to ever end this fucking episode that we, you know, we finally got and I'm grateful for you to come because you, you have done a lot for a lot of people. And, um, I think sometimes, I don't know. I think sometimes people at the top i know I've, i felt in positions where like for me i didn't feel like someone cared enough or like someone was grateful enough to, to be a part of something but at least for me in regards to you and everything you've created and obviously steve here as well and fucking everyone else involved uh i'm grateful to be a part of it yeah even, no, it's even good I, I, I love having you involved and you know i enjoy your company as well too even business aside like yeah you're a funny great guy i love your company and your energy um, and content wise too, I love having you in the content. Yeah. So now it's no more. Uh, I think it'd be, I think it'd be great if this year we could just do a lot of content all together. Steve, if he's allowed on YouTube. Yeah. It's, that's but a tough one. Yeah. I mean, 
just I think this year, I mean, even if it's not YouTube, I was saying too, like, let's just let's use this year too. Like, let's just do a lot of let's continue the takeover. Even even short form stuff, I think short work form really well. stuff too. Yeah, like TikTok, Instagram, yeah. Instagram too. I was telling Steve that too, but anything he's doing for his Rumble should be like. But yeah, yeah. there's a lot of short form shit that. What? Oh, thank you. How did I cap? How did I cap? <laughs> How did I cap? All right, boys, listen up. Shout out from another one of our sponsors, Mint Mobile. Now check this out. This is one of the most important things in life and in business and all this stuff, cutting your costs, okay? We gotta call it what it is. I have had sell plans that have just been exorbitantly high. Mint Mobile is here to save you. Mint Mobile is here to give you a cellular plan, even with your existing phone, because you could switch over with an eSIM for only $15 a month. Unlimited talk and text. They got the, the, the fastest network for high speed information ever again this is $15 a month I've spent probably like I don't even know hundreds of dollars for a plan and yes it has like a few lines on it but like literally hundreds of dollars a month and uh I found out about Mint Mobile and I'm like what what's going on why why have why am I not saving like literally like $150 a month but yeah give it a shot if you guys are looking to cut some of your costs which honestly is smart because it's just an excess cost because you know it's some other brand name which is like just unnecessary kind of really honestly all right, so if you guys are interested, you want to save some money, go to mintmobile.com slash raw talk. Get your plan sent to you for free, shipped to your door for free. Again, that is mintmobile.com slash raw talk. Save some money. Have an amazing phone plan. Like, don't be like I have been the last, you know, years. Go to mintmobile.com slash raw talk. Sign up today. Let's get back into this podcast. And then what you said Fuck you, bro. We've done so much cool shit. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, that. It is true. Like, you know, it, everyone's not always exactly on the same page, blah, blah, but that's how life is. But I, I couldn't end this without telling you, like, being a part of everything that I've been able to be a part of with you has been massive for me as well. That's dope. And, like, without saying that is, like, would be really fucking lame. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of you, man. Like, you, you. you've done so much for, like, so many people, your family, obviously the audience, everyone. But it's like, if you didn't keep pushing this forward, I know, because I remember at one point, this is no knock on Jesse. I remember talking to you about this and seeing how much effort you put in every single day for this. And and I was looking at it, and again, it's not a knock on Jesse. I saw other people just, you know, kind of not wanting to be a part of it as much. And it makes sense because they, they, they live that experience and then they're ready to move on to something else. And I completely understand it. But I, I know, I remember when we started filming stuff back in the day, it was like, you had to do these things. And now you kind of got to this point where, you know, you're able to obviously continue doing it, continue to grow. And there's so much more to do. But if you didn't keep pushing that forward the way you did, it wouldn't be what this is today for all of us. For sure. But so, yeah, I guess in his defense too, it's like, if you're not happy, yeah, not knocking. No, him. I know yeah, you didn't yeah. knock him, but yeah, if he was, he just wasn't happy. So it's different. I think if I'm never not happy doing this shit, I would stop too. I'm just actually happy doing it. Yeah, no, I get it. You know, like I had that little period of two weeks ago where I wasn't feeling that great. Yeah. And if that continued, like, dude, I wouldn't be able to physically totally. be here doing this. Right. No, no, that's one thing I learned like the last, you know, two months, just two, it's just like, dude, really like being happy is the most important thing. Yeah, for sure. And that, that's again, that's so cliche, but I, I've been through times where it's like, damn, like, you know, you're just not feeling happy and there's yeah. nothing worse than that. Right. So yeah. That's one thing this year too. It's like, we're going to keep killing it too. But I'm also keeping in mind that it's like, dude, if you're not happy, then this shit's all fucking pointless. It it's is. Real, it really it's is. It's absolutely you know? pointless. Everything. If, if, we, if we just do shit, we just do it just to do it. We're going to be fucking miserable, man. Yeah. So I think that's a big thing this year, but I'm excited for this year, man. I am too. I'm really excited. Yeah. I just, again, people are like, yo, what's the pivotal moment? Like it's still going to get bigger, bro. Yeah. I think we're going to just be something like so big. Like, we're just, I just think we're going to be so big. Like, we're I think just going to be at the top of, like, the business game. Yeah. I think we got to go crazy this year, though. We got to go crazy. And yeah. we got to, we got to adapt to the new shit. Yeah. We got to, we got to get more short form shit That's out. That's a fact, yeah. And, yeah. Nelk videos we're going to do probably once a month. Podcast, that's a fucking, yeah. That's easy. The best shit ever. We're going to get the best guests and shit. Um, yeah, and we got a good team now, too. Yeah, solid. So, it'd be good to have you in the videos, too. Steiny's been dope too. Yeah. Gambles is fucking dope. Yeah, man. But I just I Salim, again, cousin, Gabe, Steve. 
I just want to say I'm proud of you for real, man. You've Thank done you because, like I said, all those people all exist kind of in this in this world in relationship to what you continue to push forward. I think too. I've been noticing too. I mean, it's crazy when I first met you and we started hanging out, like where raw gear was at. Oh, bro! Compared to where it's at now. No, I'm not, bro. I mean, I'm a, I, like I'm, you. You like really. You yeah. really transformed it. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it's man. Crazy. Like, like I, like, like I, I don't want to shit on it, but like before, it was like pretty much nothing, right? Almost. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you were doing it, but like yeah. now it's like a full fledged brand thing, and yeah. like all the people that you have repping it and shit. Yeah, like it's it's inspiring to me too. Yeah, I'll be, I'm being dead honest. Like, no, I get you, and yeah. it's cool because the truth is, I remember, um, I remember years ago when we were we're doing business stuff together, and we were sending each other like numbers and stuff. And I was looking at your numbers, looking at mine, and I was like, damn. And then I, as soon as like we did that, we like worked on some stuff. That's besides the point is I saw this and then I started to see, cause we would continue to talk about like um, growth, like what you were doing, like, you know, and I see these crazy numbers. Cause you also, you would also promote it. Like, and I'm not gonna lie. I remember those days and I was like, damn, yo, what the fuck? I was like, there's no, there's like, I, I need to step this up. So even what I, where I'm at now with raw gear specifically is also, part of that motivation came from seeing what was possible, the things that you were doing and we were doing. I was a part of it as well, but watching, watching that go crazy. I was like, yo, it, it was like just simply seeing something and being able to like, Oh, this is really possible. Cause I saw it. Like you right. couldn't deny it. Right. I was like, fuck, I, I think I want to be able to do that. So you even me, obviously I've always had big aspirations, but seeing it be like super tangible through what you were doing, I was like, fuck that, that, like I said, it's like the inspiration goes back and forth. 100%. And that's with everyone too. Yeah, you or Steve or even watching other creators and stuff. Yeah. You always like, even if they're smaller than you, you'll look at them and you'll be like, damn. Like, yeah, I got to go harder. They did this. I want to do this. Like, and I think I think this is the difference. That's, between, that's key too. Yeah. And like this is the difference between like really successful people versus people who like flounder is like people who see other people do it. And they get motivated to be better instead of like demotivated to like fuck that person. I you know I don't have this because of them or whatever. Yeah, the that's fuck. a good. That's actually a good point too. I remember that. Like I remember when we used to go to like L.A. parties and like we wouldn't get let in and shit. Yeah, that used to happen all the time. Or like someone would tell you to pull up, and like, um, because when we first came to L.A., we were nobodies, right? So yeah. like we'd go to we go to parties and like maybe you wouldn't get in and like all the influencers that like you were like that were popping at the time this was like vine days yeah like all those like vine the viners are in there and shit too like yeah and you didn't get let in like i remember like some of our team would get pissed and i would just get like pissed in a good way and I, I it would literally motivate me so much yeah every time that i got denied from an la party i would just flip it into motivation and be like all right like this is never gonna happen like one day and shit yeah you know what i mean for sure yeah, that's huge, man. It's all how you channel this shit, the energy and like into the things that you're doing. Like I yeah. said, a lot of people choose to take the left way and be like, yeah, this sucks, man. Uh, my life, I don't have because he has it. And you you like everything you said is like literally the ideas around just keeping it real. Well, what you enjoy, not quitting, obviously, and like using all this motivation to make you better instead of make you worse. That's a good last one. Yeah. Channeling it. Yeah, that's what you did, man. It's impressive. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Congrats on everything. Well, let's keep it up this year. Let's fucking yeah. Let's go big. Full send. Happy dad. Fucking everything, man. Mm -hmm. Really, really fucking dope. Yeah. And I'm happy that I'm part of it. Let's so it. let's keep it. Thank up. you for coming on the pod. Yeah. Uh, making it. the time because I know you fucking are a busy man. I was gonna say too on the on the topic of that. Yeah. I think we should maybe talk about a let them decide, but a, a full send raw gear collab. Bro, I would love to. That go crazy. It Whether would. we do it limited or whatever, but it would go nuts. Make it super dope. Yeah. I'm with it. Be dope. Yo, they're going to go nuts in the comments for that. Well, now we built the hype. Yeah. Be crazy. Cool. I appreciate you coming, man, for real. All right, bro. Um, subscribe, it. iTunes, YouTube, all that shit. Um, yeah, bro. You're a legend. Good shit. Proud of you. All right, bro. Yes, sir. Hell yeah.